Hi, I'm Mark Logan, and welcome once again to the Last Light School of Photography. Today we're here to talk about curtain backgrounds. Now, curtain backgrounds have been around with us for a very long time. In fact, as long as I've been a photographer, they've been here. But traditionally, they've been a, a muslin kind of cotton background, uh, which have been very good, but they've always had the, uh, pro the problem of creasing. It means that when we get them out of the bag, as soon as we put them up, we're either going to have to steam them or iron them to get rid of those creases no matter what. Uh, the difference here with the knitted style of background is that it's designed to stretch out. Um, each of these backgrounds comes with these kind of little clamps. So it allows us to put it up onto the background support system or whatever we're going to support, support it with, wrap it around the uh, pole and then just actually pull it out, which instantly gets rid of the majority of those cre creases, which as a photographer who arrives at a location, wants to shoot as soon as I can, that's really what I need to try and do. So just threading this back onto the background support itself. Popping it back onto the actual thing. So just going to put that one up first, first of all, up fully and then back three or four inches just to give it that extra kind of uh, uh, rigidity. It's a very strong stands anyway. Brilliant, just there for me. So before we do anything else, let's just flick out the background, get it nice and easy for us to clamp out. Okay, Stuart, if you want to uh, just clamp yours off for me. Uh, when we're working together, or if I'm working alone, I tend to always clamp the one side first. The reason being, it just allows me to really pull it taut. And by doing the one side first, it just uh, minimizes the amount of uh, kind of um, any horizontal kind of crease lines that might uh, still be in the fabric itself kind of thing. But you can see how quick, uh, quickly that is with no work how we've got rid of the majority of those crease lines there you couldn't do that with a muslin background. As a photographer we're trying to create a three-dimensional shape on a flat piece of paper and this has to be done with light and we're using the main light here to bring some kind of shape and dynamic to the subject from the highlight area to the shadow area that's what we're trying to achieve the background light or the hair light is being used as that first point of separation, that three-dimensional approach. And it's these two lights that we're going to move between a low-key image to a mid-key image and then to a high-key image to really kind of show, show you how ver versatile, if you understand the use of light, how you can get some great images in a limited amount of time and just gives you kind of an extra key skill within photography. Now, what we've got to begin with is a simple mid-tone image. Let's just have a look at that photograph for a minute. Vicky, you're going to turn the head this way a little bit, darling. Eyes at me, please. That's the way it's there. Perfect model. So you can see a simple image, two lights, one to light the subject's face, the other to separate it from the background. And that mid-key image is because we're using a mid-tone background. In other words, an 18%-ish kind of grey. We're now going to light the background, which will still give us that kind of three-dimensional relief. So I haven't changed the power of the, the hair light a minute. So let's just see the, dif the difference, how that affects the background itself. Keep it. It's lovely. And you can see already how that light is beginning to illu illuminate just this top part of the background. Now, why is it doing that? Okay, let's just do a quick test shot on that first, because now we've allowed that light to spill, and I'll get Jay to put those side by side, so at least we get to actually see the, the, diff, the difference in that image. Just to turn the head, Vicky, just a little bit. That's perfect, darling. Great big smile for me, darling. Excellence there. Happier again. You, you can do it. Good faker. Um, you can see how almost high key that image has become. Why? Because we've allowed the light to spill more onto the background. It's illuminating itself more as it spreads plus it's going on to already a mid-tone. So the more light that's going on to the, back, the background, it's going to increase the, to the tonality, hence into a lighter and brighter effect. So you can see how we could move from a mid-key to a higher key image with very little work at all. So let's just decrease that amount of power. Let's come back down to mid-key to mid -key before we look at the high-key scenario fully. Okay, and again, for me, darling, turn the hips around towards here. Other way, please. Let's go just turn the head, head back to me now. Gorgeous there, excellent. Turn the head more, a little bit more. Perfect model. Let me have a little look. Great. Quick there, and I'll come back up. Turn the head more for me. That's great. And one, one more. It's cool just there. So look at the difference in that image, how we've now brought the tonality back into the grey because we're not overexposing the background. And that's what we were doing before. So be aware of how one light alone is going to affect the whole image. 
Let's look at now how we can create a low-key image with very little work done to the image. Now, the, sim the simplest way is to work with one light, so you don't light the, back the background. We will light the background later on in this film, so you can see some of the, te the texture that we're going to give. So let's go back down to one light to give ourselves a very low-key image. Okay, Vicky, you're going to look up towards the light, light for me more for me, darling. Really looking there. It's gorgeous. Can you use that other hand on the hip as well? Just give me some, both of them, both hands. Exaggerate more for me, up, up with the chin more. Turn the head away from me to the left more for me. That's gorgeous. And again for me, shoot that as well. Look a little bit lower for me. That's gorgeous there. Relax. Now, how quick is that? We've gone from what was a higher key back to the mid key and now to a very low key image by control of light. If I want to create a dramatic image like we have here now in the low, the low key, but start to light the background a little bit, we can start to involve the second light again to give us a three-dimensional kind of shape. So just with these two lights here and some simple accessories, we're going to have an image that is going to have a little bit of light down in the bottom right-hand side here. When Vicky's looking off to the side, getting that fantastic illumination, we're going to get a very strong image. So let's try that now. Excellent. So let me just check a little beautiful. That's the shot. Brilliant. Just there for me again. Turn the head away to the left more, Vicky. That's lovely. Let's look at a high, my high key now, or as true a high key as we can get. Keep it. Turn the head back to me again. It's gorgeous there. Happier. You can do it. Turn the head more for me. That's gorgeous there. Great shot. Thanks very much. How great is that? We've been able to move from high key, mid key, low, low key, all the way through that space spectrum of tone with just the one background and two lights. Now we're just going to add the texture in. Uh, first of all, using one of the clamps to attach to the stand. I'm just going to try and give us a drape kind of, a uh, bit of a scalloped kind of edge to it and things really. And that's just a little bit of pra practice and playing around with what you think feels and looks good as much as anything else. Let's go just turn the head this way a little bit more per perfect there. Let me just check you look beautiful. Not bad at all. Beautiful, just there. And again for me. Lower the chin a touch more, that's gorgeous there. Keep it there, it's beautiful. Shoot, close up as well in a minute. Fantastic, Vicky, thank you very, very much. Go and have a rest, thank you.